Hello, everyone. I'm Becca, dietitian by trade, mom 24-7, wife from the start, and when there's a few extra hours in the day, you might find me hitting the trails or on horseback. And I'm Kara, a therapist to women, a mom to a boy, an entrepreneur, mountain junkie, and a postpartum runner. And this is Fit for a Queen, a podcast that's devoted to the female athlete wanting to balance the teeter-totter of all the things we desire out of life as women. Performance, health, intellect, and taking time for self, even if we only get one minute out of the day. We're so excited to be bringing you the queens in the athletic world who have done just that. Okay, ladies, take a seat at your thrones, grab your crowns, and welcome to Fit for a Queen. Okay. Welcome back to Fit for a Queen, ladies. We have Nicole Debris back in studio. And if you haven't listened to part one of Nicole's podcast, she talks a lot about pregnancy and postpartum. So welcome back in the studio, Nicole. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Let me tell you a little bit about Nicole. Nicole Debris is a pelvic floor physical therapist in Kansas City, Missouri. She specializes in treating both males and females with pelvic pain, back pain, SI joint pain, urinary or fecal incontinence bowel dysfunction, prolapse, pain with intercourse, and pregnancy-related pain issues. Nicole studied at Kansas State University in Manhattan, Kansas, receiving a Bachelor of Science degree in kinesiology in 2012. She then completed her doctorate of physical therapy at Rockhurst University in 2016. Nicole was drawn to pelvic floor physical therapy immediately upon being exposed to this population during PT school. She completed a full-time internship at Foundational Concepts. This is a clinic specializing in the treatment of pelvic floor disorders in Kansas City, receiving extensive training in pelvic floor physical therapy before accepting a position there as a full-time physical therapist in 2016. She has continued to further her knowledge in pelvic floor PT through continuing education courses with the Herman and Wallace Institute. Nicole is working towards obtaining her Women's Health Certified Specialist Certification through the American Physical Therapy Association. Nicole has a special interest in treating women with pre- and postnatal musculoskeletal conditions. She strives to help women during and after pregnancy maintain or return to their desired level of function or exercise. As an avid endurance runner and two-time Boston Marathon qualifier herself, Nicole feels she can relate with this active population. She's also one of these annoying people that runs one marathon and qualifies for Boston. (laughs) And we haven't thrown her out yet? I know. (laughs) (laughs) Nicole believes that there is no cookbook recipe on the right way to recover from or navigate through pregnancy. She's devoted to working with patients individually to meet their unique needs and goals. When not at work, Nicole enjoys running, hiking, traveling, brunching, and doing all things outdoorsy. Welcome back to the show, Nicole. Thank you. Thank you. I talked a little bit about my own experience um, in our first podcast, and I'll kind of reiterate that again because it kind of leads to how I met Nicole. I struggled postpartum after my first baby, struggled a lot with um, pain due to delivery and being pregnant. And at six weeks, I got the okay to go back to running, and I am an avid runner too, was really looking forward to it. And I got out there on the trails, and it did not feel right. Uh, There was stuff going on. I was having a lot of pain, and I knew it didn't feel right. So I found Nicole for some pelvic floor issues, but then talked to her about my pelvis and hip issues when I got to the first appointment and figuring out that this is all related, I was trying to get back to running. So uh, Nicole figured out that I kind of lost my butt. (laughs) I'm not sure how long it was gone, but it came apparent to me that it was missing after I tried to return to running and um, I was having a lot of those issues. So talking about this, Nicole, we, you mentioned that this is a common issue that runners have, not having a butt. And thank you for that. Now I've been noticing runners' butts uh, since then. And we not in have, a weird way, we promise. <laughs> we do have some flat asses. So right. can you explain more about what this means, why this is happening, what issues can come about um, as a runner when it comes to our body and physical therapy? Yes, absolutely. So our our bum is uh, one of our one of the pieces of our core system. So I kind of think of our core system as 
as our, um, what navigates us, what, what leads everything. All of our limbs come off of that core system. So if we don't have a nice sturdy base to pull from or to move from, then muscles have to work too hard or muscles have to compensate and accommodate. So I think of the core as four main pieces really. So the diaphragm is the top, which is our biggest breathing muscle. Around the back and the sides is going to be our abdominal muscles. And then the bottom is our pelvic floor muscles, all those muscles that sit in kind of the crotch of our pants that we touched touched a little bit on in my first episode. And then the glutes. The glutes are our butt muscles, and those are kind of the bottom part of that core system as well. And so like in, in Kara's case, after, you know, I, I'm not sure you ever had a butt because, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> many of us runners don't, like yeah. you've noticed. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it really wasn't an issue for you mm-hmm. until after pregnancy. Mm-hmm. And I think that just kind of exacerbated everything, which happens to a lot of women during pregnancy. You know, with pregnancy, our posture changes a little bit. It's like carrying a 20-pound backpack on the front of you for nine months. Mm -hmm. Our posture has to change to accommodate for that. They say it only takes a couple days of doing some movement pattern for it to become a habit. So imagine what happens after (laughs) nine months. Right, right, right. And then it doesn't stop there either because then you're still carrying Carrying that baby baby. around on the front (laughs) of you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that causes our whole center of gravity to kind of shift forward. Um, Oftentimes our our spine becomes a little bit more curved and our butt muscles are just put at a position that aren't really active. Mm -hmm. And when... When those muscles are weakened or not really working and our core core system isn't nice and strong, other muscles start to take over. And those are our, what we call our, our global muscles. So those are our big muscles. Those mm-hmm. are the ones you see on the outside of our body. So like our big biceps, mm-hmm. our big leg quadricep muscles. Those are the muscles that get all the glory, mm-hmm. but that don't really do a lot for us when it comes to our stabilization at the deepest level. Mm-hmm. So our 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 butt muscles really help to act as a piece of that core stabilizing system. So when we go to run or jump or do more higher level activities, we have a nice stable base to pull off of. I'm wondering if this movement with Fitzbo and Fitzpiration and having more defined muscles is actually putting us at more risk because we're losing our function. Yes. Yeah, that's a great point. And, you know, you would be amazed at some of the women who come into my clinic who are high level athletes, you know, CrossFitters and endurance runners. I was I was my own patient (laughs) because I was a victim of this as well. Um, But from the outside, look super fit and look super in shape. But then when we start talking, there actually are a lot more issues going on and come to find out their deep stabilizing core system is just completely, complete crap, you know, Mm -hmm. And, and it looks from the outside, they look really good. But they may not feel good, and they may be having pain or even other issues. Right. Mm -hmm. So in your um, first interview, and be sure to check that out, Queens, you talk about how important that pelvic floor is um, as part of our anatomy when it comes to overall strength. Um, Can you speak a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So I just talked a little bit on our whole core system, kind of those four pieces, um, the diaphragm, the abdominal muscles, the pelvic floor, and then the glutes. Um, This whole, if you think of this whole core system kind of like a pop can or um, like a balloon, it acts like a pressure system. So our intra-abdominal pressure, which is the pressure between in that whole core system, should be maintained. So we should have a certain amount of pressure in there, and we use that pressure to support our spine to support our pelvis bones. You know, our our pelvis bones are actually three separate bones. They're not connected. So they're just, they're connected by ligaments and then our muscles. And it's the pressure in that core system which helps that whole system to function and to keep it stable. So, um, you know, that pressure system has to be able to accommodate and make changes as we do activities. So when we run, for example, or when we jump, if you think about 
our um, pelvic floor kind of like a rubber band. It has to be able to relax and contract quickly to kind of accommodate for that pressure change. So like a rubber band, you have to pull the rubber band in order for it to snap back up. So the pressure has, we have to be able to change that, um, change how our muscles work in order to keep that pressure constant when we're doing different movements so that we're not having a weakness in that system. A weakness in that core system then causes issues. That can be anything from um, like peeing your pants while you're working out. That can Mm -hmm. be causing things like hip pain or back pain if our back isn't supported by that pressure, that right amount of pressure. Um, That can cause things like prolapse or, you know, when your organs basically descend lower and are at a lower point than they should be. And all of those issues can come when our pelvic floor or part of our core isn't functioning like we want it to. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating how that can lead to all sorts of chronic conditions that really lead people to then be sedentary. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. maybe if they started more proactive, they wouldn't have that happen later in life. Mm-hmm. I wanted to touch on, again, kind of my experience. Yeah. Because, Nicole, when we were um, seeing each other, you talked a little bit about or asked about my history as a runner. And I realized, like, well, I've always had hip issues and hip pain and always thought that's because, well, I'm a runner, right? I should have hip pain. And what we're finding out is that because of, I lost my butt, my (laughs) hip flexors were taking over. So Nicole would be like, flex your butt. I'm like, I am. She's like, no, you're not. (laughs) You're you're flexing your hip flexors. Did you get a YouTube video of this? (laughs) I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know how to flex my butt because uh-huh. my hip flexors were so strong they were taking over yes. and i probably ran like that mm-hmm. for a long time so nicole and i talked about running a different way so uh, my butt would take over but also this this mind body connection of f- figuring out how to strengthen something that i had lost can you Explain a little bit about how the brain and body works because that was when I found it. I'm like, oh, <laughs> there it okay. is. Okay, and then once There's I got it, flex. it's like riding a bike, <laughs> right? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, Kara. I don't think you're alone in that. Many athletes, you know, have this issue. They can't find muscles because we we kind of our body takes the path of least resistance so we find a way that works and our body just goes with it and we don't know what we're doing we just walk and we move and we our body's efficient so we get from point a to point b in the easiest way possible and you were getting around fine Mm -hmm. without a butt for Mm -hmm. all those years but eventually it (laughs) caught up with you right (laughs) and you know the bottom line is that our we can't strengthen a muscle if our brain can't find it so first we have to make the connection from our brain to the muscle and that's that nerve connection that neuromuscular connection so nerve to muscle so our brain has to actually be able to find and activate a muscle before we strengthen it Mm -hmm. and that was definitely the biggest issue for you Carrie you just didn't even know your brain didn't know how to find that muscle because Mm -hmm. for so long you had been using this movement pattern that worked for you Mm -hmm. but over time and then putting a, be- a pregnancy on top of it, it it was enough to set it over the edge and then it wasn't working for mm-hmm. you. But, you know, and I, I think this is a big problem with some of those, um, like, like we were talking about earlier, the FITSPO mm-hmm. exercise programs is they give you these exercises that, you know, it's a, it's a really great ideal idea. And based on these exercises, you should be activating your glutes with this one and your quads with this one or different muscle groups with these different exercises but you can do those exercises using completely different muscle groups Mm -hmm. you know and there was there was some exercises that we worked on Kara for a long time (laughs) and you could go home and you would do the exercises and you got them done for a couple weeks but then you'd come show me and it was like oh we're using completely different muscles Mm -hmm. and so when athletes go and they you know, find these programs online or their coaches may even give them certain exercises. It's like, yes, you're doing the exercises, but what muscles are actually being recruited when you're doing this? Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, our, our posture as runners 
oftentimes just leads to us wanting to recruit more of like our hip flexors and the butt muscles kind of go to the wayside. Mm -hmm. And like Kara talked about, your hip problems and knee problems were probably a result of higher up the chain. Our Mm -hmm. body's all connected, Mm -hmm. you know. We can't have an ankle problem without it affecting the rest of our body. And oftentimes it comes back to that core, Mm -hmm. where the movement is beginning from, and then how it affects it down the chain. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's opposite. Sometimes it is starting at the foot and working its way up. But I, I do see this common theme with runners that oftentimes it's, that core and that butt says that butt that's not really um, doing what it's supposed to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Besides the butt, you mentioned a couple <laughs> of things. What other issues do female athletes uh, struggle with and how PT can help? Yeah. I think uh, a big one that has, I feel like gotten a lot more media attention lately is uh, um, athletes who pee their pants during workouts. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've seen even some workout programs kind of um, I- idolize this, like, this act of peeing your pants when you work out. And, you know, I've seen shirts <laughs> that say, if you didn't pee while you worked out, you didn't work out hard enough. Interesting. Wow. Huh? And, I mean... To, I don't want to be doing that. That no pain, no gain. I don't want to work out time. next to somebody. That's <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and to me, that is like bells going off in my mm-hmm. head as something's up with your pressure system. Something's up probably with either your pelvic floor, your abdominals, your diaphragm. Something's going wrong. There's a weakness in that system. And a lot of these programs are that, you know, athletes are peeing during our lifting heavy, heavy weights. Mm -hmm. And if you Mm -hmm. think about putting all of that weight on a weak core system, Mm. uh, that can just lead to something's going to give all sorts of crazy (laughs) issues. Yeah. And, and I even, you know, I see, I see high level athletes with these issues and there's even been a lot of Olympians that have come out saying, you know, I pee during workouts Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's a big sign that something is going on at the deeper level and something's not right with that stabilizing system. And over time, that's just going to get worse. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the, the first sign may be peeing your pants, mm-hmm. but then eventually when does that become an injury, mm-hmm. a hip injury or a knee injury or something else and the athlete ends up hurting themselves? Well, yeah. I mean, you see these commercials now where unfortunately you can get depends for just that. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, yeah. there'd be something better than that. Mm-hmm. I know. Yeah. Right. Why not? Why not just fix the actual problem instead of putting a bandaid therapy. on it? Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yep. I know you and I talked about this. It's such an interesting concept of what I would have known or could have known about these issues when I was a younger athlete. I think you were talking about how, I don't know if you're at a workshop of some kind of girls running Mm -hmm. and you were like, these were um, high performing. They were doing well, but noticing their form probably wasn't the greatest, but what do you do when someone's doing well at a sport? Do you mess up their form in the present with the possibility of doing um, less damage down the road. Because I think for me, if I probably would have known some of this as a younger athlete, my hips probably would be feeling a little bit better now. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that is, you know, that's a really great point, Kara, because you see, you know, these young athletes, maybe 10 and 12 years old, and they're performing really well Mm -hmm. with terrible form. And so their coaches aren't correcting it because they're getting the results. Right, right, right. And not saying there's this ideal form, like everyone has to run this way. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone's body's a little bit different, and um, there's not one perfect way. But I think that it could be helpful for some of these runners when they get older for prevention of problems. And who knows, maybe they may even perform better when they get older Mm -hmm. if we make some of those corrections when they're younger and unfortunately like a lot of the you know coaches or trainers that are teaching these kids don't don't have any idea of that Mm -hmm. of that Mm -hmm. knowledge you know and they probably could benefit from a little bit bit more help with form so then down the road they're you know not having as many injuries and maybe even performing better Mm -hmm. because 
you know, how you, the activities you do when you're young is kind of what sets your base for when you move up. You know, Mm -hmm. almost always I can tell just from posture when patients come in, I'm like, oh, you are a dancer when you're younger Mm -hmm. or, Mm -hmm. oh, you are a runner, Mm -hmm. you know, and that truly does affect us and kind of set, set us up for later in life. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, it's never too late to teach our, it's never too late to teach an old dog new tricks. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. we can, we can change that. But again, that comes back to that brain body that connection, connection. Yeah. and f- allowing our brain to find different movement patterns mm-hmm. and change the way we activate and recruit muscles. Mm-hmm. So now, you know, working on different running patterns, I was like, I've been running like this for like 30 years. <laughs> There's no way, <laughs> but it takes a lot more like training your brain and body to, uh, do another movement that's been used to. It, well, it only makes time. sense, you know. In sport, we talk about fundamentals and building the basics and techniques. Why wouldn't we explore what our body's doing in that movement and mm-hmm. making sure we're getting that down first? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Well, this was such helpful information, I think, for a lot of our listeners who are are active. So, thanks so much, Nicole. And we end each interview asking our guests how they live the fit philosophy themselves. Yes. Well, as you mentioned, Kara, I am a endurance runner myself. And, you know, I've had a time in my life where I've kind of taken that to an extreme mm-hmm. and I've put in, put all of my time into performance or into my workout goals. And I've really been at a place where I've neglected everything else in my life. And I've become a lot more of a well-rounded person by focusing more on balance. I think that athletes often fall into this same same pattern and it's really important not to neglect the other parts of life and I, I kind of think about our life as three different baskets or cups that we need to fill up. So the mind, the body, and then the self. And at different times in your life, one cup or one basket might need a little bit more poured into it, you know, just based on what's going on. But you can never completely neglect one area or another area. And, you know, it's it's important to make sure all three areas are fed. And I used to really g- get on top of myself when I would eat ice cream late at night and then have a crappy workout the next morning. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you need that sometimes. And now I think about that as more of feeding that that self basket and giving myself a little bit more self love mm-hmm. and then, you know, allowing myself to do that. So overall, I am much more balanced and happy. Mm-hmm. It's a really good point. It's really it's a good point. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining us again in the studio, Nicole. <laughs> yeah. We love uh, having her. Yeah, such great information. If you want to know how to get a hold of Nicole, you can find her at Foundational Concepts at foundationalconcepts.com. You can also email her directly at Nicole at foundationalconcepts.com. We'll put all of that information and more in the show notes. Thanks so much, Nicole. I'm not too proud to beg. Please leave us a review on iTunes. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Thank you to our sponsor today, Sentimano Counseling. Sentimano Counseling is the premier perinatal mental health practice in Kansas City, treating mood disorders during pregnancy and postpartum, perinatal loss, infertility, eating, and exercise disorders. Go to sentimano.com for further information about the practice and services. For additional information on today's topic and guests, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at fit for a queen. And Hashtag fit for a queen. And don't forget to rate us on iTunes. We can't wait for you to join us next time on Fit for a Queen. Bye, queens.